come up on his mind real strong, and he started weeping. He said, how that it has been so hard for Brother Branham to stand against the world and these things in all churches. Like it, is, it was once said of one of the Billy Graham parts that we can see Billy Graham because all churches are united together for him. We see Oral Roberts, the Pentecostals. But how do we ever have anything that is contrary to what people have been taught? It's gone. And Danny, what he does for a hobby, he makes little stones. He walked out to where the cross had been put down, where they said the cross set in the rock. No one was around, so he broke off a little piece of rock. And he put it in his pocket for a souvenir, come home and made me a pair of cufflinks out of it. And strangely, when he made them, they looked to be blood-stained, and right through each one of them, in continuity, runs a straight, narrow path right through both of them. Now, that might be just, um, uh, see, I, someone else might not notice it, but to me, it's complementary to the things I believe. I believe that everything has a meaning to it. And now, in this time, whatever the Lord has, uh, if this isn't the thing that he prophesied of a Malachi for... And of also of Luke 17 and many other scriptures that's to happen in this last day. May I say this in closing? It's laid the foundation for the man when he will come. So I am very thankful that God Almighty, if it's be that way, has let me do a little something in my uneducated condition to show my appreciation of his love to me, my love to him and our love to the people. Therefore, in sincerity, I approach this subject of marriage and divorce. May Amen. God have mercy on us all. Amen. And now, listen closely. And sisters, don't get up and go out. Sit still just a little while. Brothers, do the same. Don't turn off your sets out there that's coming on this hookup. Don't do that. Just sit still for a few minutes until it's over. Listen close. If you disagree... Put down the scriptures that I use and then study them prayerfully before you make your decision. God help us as we try to approach this subject. Now, it may be a little lengthy. I don't want you to be in any hurry. And uh, just take your time, all of us, and study the Word of God truly and thoroughly as we know how to study it. Let's begin with St. Matthew, the 19th chapter. And beginning, I think, with the eighth verse of the nineteenth chapter, I uh, wish to start. I might start also with the first and read down to the eighth verse of the nineteenth chapter. Now remember, these things that I say must come from the Word of God. It can't be my own opinion. Because my opinion, just like anybody else's, but it's got to be in continuity with the Word of God. Remember, God keeps everything in continuity. He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. You believe that? He's the same. Now I shall read from the 19th chapter. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these things, he departed from Galilee, and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him. I pause there so you get the emphasis on who it was that was tempting him. Saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them in the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Therefore they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together... Let not man put asunder. They said unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and put her away? 
And he said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Now, God help us. This scripture, this question, confronted Jesus at the very beginning of his ministry. And it confronted Moses at the very beginning of his ministry. It's a foremost question in believers' hearts. The sinner doesn't care. But it's to believers because the believer is trying to do all that he knows how to do to live right before God. Therefore, if any question comes up on religion... Then the marriage and divorce case comes up. Why? Because it is the cause of the original sin. That's where sin started. And that's the reason it's brought up every time, because it is the very beginning of sin. Now, I won't have time to explain all these things, but I'll be glad to answer your letter or anything I can. Or we got the books wrote on it and many questions and even uh, cuttings out of newspapers and things here to prove this. We know that it was Eve, the apple that she was supposed to eat, or it's not even scriptural. Now they claim it was an apricot. It was neither one. She committed adultery. Amen. That brought forth the first child, which was Cain, Satan's own son. For in him laid evil. It did not come to Abel. Satan's son was Cain. I know your question now. He said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. That's exactly right. You could take the honorest woman in the town, the worst man. If they had a baby, it would have to come from the Lord. Because God has laws set together. And uh, these laws, like the sun to raise, you put a cucklebur in a good field, it'll grow. And it has to grow because it's God's law. When seed is planted, it must grow. And nothing can grow life but God, because it operates under His laws. Therefore, when the evil seed was planted in the womb of, of Eve, it had to bring forth because it's God's law yes. of production. And it could do nothing else but bring it, and it had to come from God. That's the reason people say, little baby, sometimes it's not born with Christian parents or lost. Jesus Christ's blood atones for the child. I don't care how much it was born, how evil it was born. He's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. The little child cannot repent because it has nothing to repent for. And that was the sin of the world, which was taken away by the blood of Christ. Babies go to heaven. It's original sin, and that's the reason it's, it's question. When any great phenomena comes from God, but the first thing, what about marriage and divorce? Now, as ever, it still is a question amongst the people. As it was in the times of Jesus, as it was in the times of Moses, it's always been and is to this day a question among the people because the people want to know what's the truth. But where there is a question, there must also be an answer. And now, being an answer, as I've said before this week, there must be a correct answer. And if we get an answer to anything, and it, uh, it isn't right, uh, then we know that it was wrong. But there's, we're still asked until the true question is answered. If you want to know truth. And being this is a Bible question, it should be a Bible answer. It's like I said, if I wanted to go east this morning, and the best that I know this I had to find a certain something in the field, and it was directly east, and I went east. Somebody said, Brother Branham, this is east. It is east, potentially, but it's northeast. I would pass the very object I was looking for. 
I'd come back knowing it was wrong. And then if somebody said, Brother Bram, go this way to your right. Now, that is potentially east also, but it's southeast. I would lose the object that I was looking for because I went beyond the boundaries of the perfect and direct way. Now, if that be so, we have two schools of thought on marriage and divorce. And that is, one of them says that a man can only be married once unless his wife is dead. That's one of the questions. But you go to following that, you go overboard. And then the next says, oh, if the wife or the husband, either one has committed adultery, either one of them can be put away and married again. You find yourself overboard with that. So, see, it's neither south, east, or north, east. We want directly east. You run out of Scripture when you go this way. You run out of Scripture when you go that way. We want to know where Scripture meets Scripture. And know what's the truth of it. Each takes a different way. And fail to bring up the correct answer. But there still must be an answer. It's just like today. There's two great schools of doctrine in the church. One of them is Calvinism. The other is Arminianism. One of them is legalist. The other one's grace. And we come to find out that the people who believe in grace, the Calvinists, they say, bless God, it don't hurt me to smoke. It don't hurt me to drink. I can do these things. I've got eternal security. Then we find the other side on the legalist said. Oh, I would like to ball him out. I'd like to show him a piece of my mind. But I'm a Christian. I have to keep still. See, you find yourself on two different roads. And neither one of them is right. Now, that's hard to say that. But it is the truth. We find ourselves on two different roads. One going one way, one another. Now, let's see what truth is. Now, listen and see if this sounds sensible to you. For instance, if I get ready to go overseas, and I'll take my own family. I'll call my wife up to me, and I will say, uh, we're go- I'm going overseas, dear. Now, here is the legalist side. Now, my wife, I'm going to lay the law down to you. If you flirt with any man while I'm gone, when I come back, you're a divorced woman. And I don't want you making eyes. I don't want you flirting. You understand that? I'm your husband. If you do it, I'm going to put you away when I come back. Then she reaches and gets me by the tie and say, My good man, I want to tell you something. <laughs> that if you make eyes at any woman or take any woman out or flirt with any woman, you're going to be a divorced man when you come back. Now, wouldn't that be a happy home? That's the legalist. All right. Now the other side is that if I go overseas and uh, uh, make a mistake, go over and say, well, now look, I'll take this woman out. Oh, it's all right with my wife. She don't care. My wife said, I'll go out with this man. It's all right, Bill. He don't care. If I don't care, then there's something wrong with me. I don't love that woman right. And if she don't care, there's something wrong with her. She's my wife. I don't want other men fooling with her. She's my wife. Now, the correct way of it is, is both of them's got a truth, but not the exact truth. Now, when I go overseas to make it right, my little family gathers around and we pray with one another. And I commit them to God and they commit me to God. And when we do, we go overseas. I go overseas. Now, I know she loves me. I have confidence in her. And I love her. She's got confidence in me. As long as I love her like that, she don't have any worry about me taking any other woman out. As long as she loves me right, well, there's no me, me thinking about any other man going out with her. Because she's my wife. And I believe her. I believe if I would actually do something wrong, make a mistake, and go out with some woman, and return back and would confess it to her and tell her, Meaty, I didn't mean to do that. I just got caught in a trap. 
This woman just run right up to me and, and uh, grabbed me by the arm and started so and so. I believe she'd be understanding. I believe she would forgive me for it. But I wouldn't do it for nothing. Because I love her. Though she would forgive me, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't hurt her for nothing. Though I know she'd forgive me for it, I don't want to hurt her. And that's the way it is with God. If, I, if a filial love, which is human love, fellowship love, can make a man feel that about his wife, what about agape love? The Greek word meaning the love of God. How would that make me do about Jesus Christ? Amen. I, as long as I want to go do it, it's in my heart to do it. Well, it, I say as long as it's in my heart to do it, I, I go do it. Legalism won't let me do it. It's because I know that I get punished for doing it. But the real truth of it is, it's when the love of God comes into your heart to you want to do it. That's the truth of it. There's the two schools. Not legalism or other, or uh, Calvinism. It's both. Now, we find out today, also there's many different denominations. There's the Catholic Church, the Protestant Church. Each one of them says they're the way. See, we have the way. We're the truth. There's the Methodist says we have the truth. The Baptist says we have the truth. Well, to me, as long as they feel that way... It's not so. Because Jesus said, I am the truth. Amen. See? Therefore, as my sermon last night was, that he is the place where God put his name, the only place to worship. You are not a Christian because you're a Protestant. You're not a Christian because you're a Catholic. You're not a Christian because you're Methodist, Baptist, or Pentecostal. You are a Christian because you've been baptized into Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Not by water. There's one faith, one Lord, one baptism. That's Holy Spirit baptism. Water baptism inducts you into a fellowship. The Holy Spirit baptism inducts you into Christ. There's the truth. We have also two thoughts of this marriage and divorce. Now that our Lord has opened the seven seal mystery of His Word to us in this last days. Now many of you, this might be Greek to you. But my church understands well, what well, you've served the visions and what's taken place. And the question is a Bible question. We are invited here to believe there must be a true answer to the whole hidden secret that's been hid since the foundation of the world. And the Bible prophesies and says that in this day these Secrets would be made known. Right. Amen. Revelations 10. And at the sounding of the seventh angel, the lady will see a messenger. The mysteries of God would be made known. And this is the last age, which is lady will see. Look at all this revival. Has went on for 15 years or more. And not one denomination come out of it. Luther had a revival, there went a denomination. Wesley, there went a denomination. Alexander Campbell, there went a denomination. All these other great John Smith and so forth, denominations. Moody, all along. But here's been one, usually a revival only lasts about three years. But this has been going for over 15 years and not one denomination has sprung up from it. For this is the seed time. There's no more shuck. After the one shuck's gone, it's seed. God is ready. If he isn't doing it now, he's going to call a church to perfection by his word, Jesus Christ. Amen. Notice, there must be an answer somewhere. And being that the seven sealed mystery of God, seven seals. How many understands that? Raise up your hands. You see, I think most of them is our congregation from around. Listen, if not, the books will be out pretty soon upon the subject. We have books, some books on it now. Jesus, in our text, invites us to go back to the beginning for the true scriptural answer. Now, when he was confronted with this, there was two things in view. The priest said to him, Can a man put away his wife, marry another for any cause? And Jesus said, 
It wasn't so from the beginning. Then they said, Moses suffered us a writing of divorcement and to put away for anything they wanted to. He said that Moses did that because, I'm letting that straight a while, because of the hardness of your hearts. But from or at the beginning, it wasn't so. The question, the question today like a world peace, is it coming by politics, union of nations? 